Welcome to today's Oracle Machine Learning Office Hour session. Our feature highlight today is data monitoring no-code user interface in Autonomous Database with Sherry LaMonica. Uh, I'm your host, Mark Hornick, with Oracle Machine Learning Product Management. In this session, Sherry provides an introduction to uh, data monitoring and the new Oracle Machine Learning data monitoring user interface on Autonomous Database. Now, we originally released data monitoring capabilities using the REST API through OML services, and this no-code user interface makes it easy to set up data monitors in a few clicks. And we're also happy to welcome uh, Marat Spivak from uh, Development, who is going to be online to also uh, take some of your questions and during the Q&A uh, at the end. So for our first poll, how familiar are you with the Oracle uh, machine learning data monitoring, uh, either the user interface or the REST API? Would you say that you've used OML data monitoring in previous projects, experimented with OML data monitoring, heard or read about it, but haven't tried it yourself, or perhaps you're new to OML data monitoring or even new to data monitoring in general? Okay, with the results coming in, uh, about half of you are new to OML uh, data monitoring, about a quarter are new to data monitoring in general, and a few have experimented with the OML data monitoring uh, capabilities. All right, well, thank you very much for that feedback. And with that, uh, it's all yours, Sherry. Okay, thank you, Mark. For our agenda today, I'll provide an introduction to Data Drift, an overview of the data monitoring UI, followed by a demonstration, and Q&A. So what is data drift? It occurs when data diverges over time from the original baseline data, and it can happen abruptly or gradually and can be persistent or transient. Monitoring for drift is known to be useful in a machine learning context to help understand how changes in uh, data are impacting uh, model prediction quality. But data monitoring is also useful outside of a machine learning context and data drift happens for different reasons, including uh, changing business environment, for example, legal or governance changes, evolving user behavior and interests like changes in customer preferences or regional trends, data quality issues like incorrect or missing data, or issues in upstream data processing pipelines like sensor mechanical wear and tear, uh, change in me measurement units or techniques, and external factors and events like disease outbreaks and policy changes. So how does the data monitoring UI measure for drift? It evaluates data drift over time and provides a, a visual representation of the data metrics and it displays the changes. It uses machine learning approaches to identify changes in data as well as features that contribute to that change. And when a monitor identifies significant differences between baseline and new data, these are highlighted so that users can investigate possible causes. Drift is measured on a zero to one scale. A zero score means that the model can't discriminate at all between the data sets, and a score of one means that it can perfectly discriminate. Creating a data monitor is as simple as defining and scheduling a monitor job and then running the job directly and viewing the results. The no-code UI makes it easy to set up monitors on a recurring schedule. You simply select data monitoring from the OML UI in Autonomous Database and specify a monitor name along with other options that we'll see during the upcoming slides and demo. And when the monitor finishes running, the users can evaluate the drift results and determine if any corrective actions are needed. And this is the UI that you'll see when, when creating a new data monitor. There are fields for providing a monitor name, the baseline data to monitor, and new data to compare against the baseline. The um, supported types for data monitoring are numeric and categorical. And you can also specify other options, such as the monitor's repeat frequency and starting time. The optional crosstab column enables bivariate analysis of your data. You can specify a case ID for repeatability of the results. The time column contains the time information in the new data, and the analysis period is the unit of time for monitoring, either day, week, month, or year. And these are just a few of the options. We'll see more during the demo. After the data monitor runs, you have access to the results. So on the left is a plot of data drift over time and whether it exceeds the drift threshold. The x-axis is the analysis period, and the y-axis contains the drift values. 
The horizontal red um, dashed line is the threshold value, and the green line depicts the drift value for each analysis period. You can also see changes in the individual column statistics as shown in the second graphic here. The importance value indicates how impactful the column has been on the data drift over that specified time period. Um, and then for numeric data, the mean, standard deviation, range, and percentage of nulls are computed. For categorical data, the number of unique values and percentage of nulls are, are computed. So we can also get deeper insights into individual column data. And here we're showing the population stability index for the column global active power. And there are other distribution metrics that are available from the drop down menu. There is a feature distribution chart containing bin data for the selected periods along with the baseline data. And if you specified a crosstab column, when you define the monitor, you'll see a frequency table and heat map containing the distribution across the two columns. And all of this information, in addition to the drift metric, gives users a more complete picture of how data may be drifting. Okay, now let's watch a video tour of the OML data monitoring UI. This is the Oracle Machine Learning User Interface. To create a data monitor, I can go under Quick Actions and select Data Monitoring, Monitor for Data Drift, or select the three line menu in the upper left corner of the screen and under Monitoring, select Data. To create a data monitor, I select Create and I can enter a monitor name. And then I select my baseline data and new data to be monitored. So my baseline data on the left, I'm going to select my user schema, OML user demo, and select household power base as my baseline data. And under new data, under OML user demo, I'm going to select household power new. The data set that we're going to monitor contains measurements of household electric power consumption in a single household near Paris over a period of almost four years, and I've already split the data into baseline and new sets for monitoring. Note that data can be added dynamically to the new data set so that observations can be included in the monitoring as data grows over time. When specified, the time column enables monitoring data changes over time. If the time column is not provided, you'll get an overall drift from baseline to new data with no time period based analysis. Let's choose month for the analysis period. This is the unit of time that monitoring is performed on the new data. So each month of data will be compared independently against the baseline data to identify potential drift. You can choose a case ID for repeatability of the results. And the optional crosstab column is an attribute in the baseline and new data sets for bivariate analysis of your data. For the monitoring schedule, we can select a start date and the repeat frequency. I'll select uh, three days, but I can also uh, monitor by minute, hour, week, or month. If recompute is enabled, the new results will replace the previous results for the specified time period. So you have the option to recompute all previous results or only assess the new data. Under additional settings, you can adjust the drift threshold from the default of 0.7 if desired. And the database service level can be changed from low to medium or high to increase the amount of resources available to the monitor run. The analysis filter can be enabled to select a custom date range for the monitor and the maximum number of runs by default is three, but you can increase this as needed. The features grid displays the list of features to monitor, and here you can select or deselect features to include or exclude from monitoring. By default, all features are selected. We will deselect submetering one. These feature statistics that you're seeing are provided if the data has statistics enabled. The statistics are calculated on the first run and updated by subsequent runs. Let's save our data monitor. 
And now that we have defined it, we can wait for the monitor to run on its schedule, or we can go back to this data monitoring page, select the data monitor and run it right away. We see the status change from scheduled to running. After the data monitor runs successfully, the monitor status is changed from running to scheduled with the last start date, the next run date, and the schedule frequency displayed. We also have a visualization of the drift metric, which is measured on a zero to one scale. A zero score means that the model cannot discriminate at all between the data sets, and a score of one means that it can perfectly discriminate. The red dashed line represents the drift threshold, and the green line represents drift from the baseline, so you can easily visualize if it surpasses your specified threshold. Each data point is the drift per group time period, and in this case, it's monthly. And you can hover over the data points to see the values. Now select the monitor so that we can see more visualizations that highlight changes in data statistics. You can also see plots of individual features and how their distribution changes over time. For numeric columns, the, the statistics include the mean, standard deviation, minimum, and maximum. And for categorical columns, you'd see the number of distinct values. You can filter on specific variables by entering them in the filter field. The importance value here indicates how impactful the column has been on data drift over the specified time period. So for any of these visualizations, if we hover our mouse over, um, over the visualization, we can see additional details. And you can see the first, last, maximum, and minimum values of the computed statistics for the analysis period. This is the population stability index for the column global intensity over time. Point one indicates a moderate population change, and point two indicates a significant population change. Jensen Shannon distance is another way to measure drift, with zero indicating that the two distributions are identical, and a value greater than zero up to one indicating that the two distributions are different. We also see statistics for up to three selected periods with a numeric summary and a visual display of the statistics from the baseline and recent test data. And if you specified a crosstab column when defining the monitor, like global active power shown here, you get a table containing the fraction of the distribution across the two columns shown as a bivariate heat map. And the heat map indicates the density of distribution for the selected um, crosstab column and the feature column. The red color indicates the highest density. We can see the last status for the monitor run, which is succeeded, the next run date, the current status, which is scheduled, and the schedule frequency. And all of this information provides insight into flagging drift and catching data quality issues proactively. Okay, so that concludes the demo. I believe we have another poll. Great, thanks, Sherry. And so for our next poll, you know, how has this session helped your understanding of the Oracle Machine Learning Data Monitoring? Were you new to uh, OML data monitoring, but now have a, a good understanding of what's possible? Perhaps you're more confident, but still have questions about how to best use it in production settings, or do you feel confident uh, to start using it right away? Maybe you've already used the Data Monitoring REST API, but this session introduced uh, you to the no-code user interface. Then again, maybe you've already used uh, the OML Data Monitoring UI, and this session enhanced your understanding. Great. So we have some uh, responses coming in. About 45% uh, were new to OML Data Monitoring, but now have a good idea of it. And uh, the third of you, I'm more confident, but still have some questions about how to use it in production and about another third uh, feeling confident to uh, start using the OML data monitoring. Excellent. Well, thank you for that feedback as well. So um, for more information here, some OML resources. We have the, um, the OML webpage at oracle.com, our blog, and GitHub repository with uh, a lot of examples, uh, the link to the OML office hours. And so this session and 
The um, slides will be posted after the session. We have the Oracle Live Labs where you can go and take a tour of our, any of our products. There's the Overview Lab, a uh, deeper dive into OMA for Pi, um, and then a link to all of the Live Labs that we have um, related to Oracle Machine Learning, and then the OML documentation link. Okay, I think we're ready to go over questions. Sounds good. One question we had was, is it necessary for a new data to be in another table than the baseline data? Uh, a use case is that you have a fact table being loaded uh, every day, and you'd like to detect a drift in uh, the newly arrived data. I think Marat answered that one. Marat, would you like to comment further? Um, not beyond the fact that there it's, it's up to you. You have multiple ways of separating baseline data and new data. And one of useful techniques is to create a view on your data. So for example, if you have a single table with baseline data, and then subsequently it's getting updated on a daily basis to get the new data, you can isolate the baseline data using a view, perhaps with a date filter. Thank you, Murat. Another question came in is, uh, what about PL SQL API for data monitoring? Yeah, so currently data monitoring is provided by OML services, and this is available via a REST API for OML services. Any plans on uh, perhaps exposing that through a different API? Um, not aware at this point, but that's something we can clarify. All right, on that, well then, thank you very much, Sherry, for the presentation and demonstration. Thank you, Murat, for answering questions for us as well. And until next time, have a, a great week. Thank you for joining us.